Hello class, this video is entitled The Ellipse. Now this is the second half of the lesson about an ellipse. Now the main thing about this section is that the center of these ellipses that you're going to be dealing with is not going to be at the origin. Um, so the center, just like when we did the vertex of the circle, sorry, vertex of the parabola, and the center of the circle, it's going to be HK. Okay, so the center is going to be HK. Now here we have A is underneath the X again. Uh, that means your horizontal distance from the center, not the origin, but from the center, is going to be A. So going left, going right, you're going to go A. The vertical distance from the center is going to be B because it's underneath the Y, which goes up and down. Your vertical distance from the center is going to be B. Your major axis, um, therefore, is going to be the distance of 2A, okay? And your minor axis is going to be the distance of 2B. Now, C, that's your um, one focus. The formula stays the same. C is equal to the square root of A squared minus B squared. And the foci is going to be, again, if you think about it, the one thing that I said over and over and over again is that A and C will always line up. A and C will always line up. So if you had to find the coordinates of the foci, what you would do is you would have your distance from the center is going to be C. But notice, again, since they line up, if A is going left and right because it's underneath the X, so is C. So your foci is going to be H plus or minus whatever C is. And your Y value is going to stay the same. Okay? Now your vertices, actually let me go ahead and change something really quick. I'm just going to cross those out. We're not going to talk about co-vertices. Um, not fully fond of how that's worded. Um, the vertices, if you think about it from A, the distance is going to be plus or minus whatever A is from the center and your Y value stays the same. And the other pair of vertices is when your H stays the same but your Y value gets added plus or minus whatever B is. And this will make a little more sense as we start plugging in values um, for A and B. So let's go ahead and do that. Here we have a problem. It's already set up for us. There's no um, extra moving across an equal sign or multiplying or dividing. Um, so it's already set up for us. The first thing you always want to determine is what is A, what is B? Now again, for an ellipse, A squared is always the larger denominator when it's in standard form. So A squared is 9, therefore A, the square root of that would be 3. If a squared is 9, then b squared is 4, and the square root of that is 2. Okay? So always establish what a and b are to begin with. Now the center, the center is going to be the hk. Again, switch the symbol of the number in the x parentheses, so negative 1. Oops. And switch symbol of the number in the y parentheses, which is k, so positive 2. So our center is negative 1, 2. So if we plot that, negative 1, up 2. There goes the center of our ellipse. Now the question is, what's the horizontal distance from this center? Now the horizontal distance is the value I'm going left and right. So the number underneath, uh, the square root of the number underneath the x. So in this case, it's going to be 2. It's going to be b, okay? Now your vertical distance the number underneath y, you take the square root, and we've got 3, there we go, um, from the center. Your vertices, so if we think about it, the horizontal distance is 2, so we're going to go over 2 to the right, over 2 to the left. And our vertical distance is up 1, 2, 3, down 1, 2, 3, okay? Now, our vertices, if you think about it, like I said before, 
and I'll end up erasing this, um, so don't necessarily write this down, um, was h plus or minus, in this case, since a is underneath, um, sorry, since the number underneath x is 4, that's the one that's less than 9, so that's going to be b, so in this case, it's plus or minus b, and then k, and the other coordinate is going to be h, and then it's k plus or minus a, since a is underneath the y value, okay? Now, let's actually put plug those numbers in. We have h plus b, plus or minus b. Now, that's where we get these coordinates over here. So our h is negative 1. We see the negative 1 there. Okay, Plus or minus whatever b is. Well, b is 2. So therefore, let's go ahead and erase that. Negative 1 minus 2 is negative 3, and our y value stays the same. And the other one is negative 1 plus 2, which is 1, and our y value stays the same. And there goes our two coordinates, okay, going left and right. And if we look at our graph, you'll notice this coordinate is 1, 2, and this coordinate on the far left is negative 3, 2. Okay, let's go ahead and draw the ellipse. And our other vertices um, is when we're going to add to the k. So our x value stays the same. Now we're going to apply the a. And we're going to say 2 minus 3, which is negative 1, and 2 plus 3, which is 5. Now it's just going to be easier to graph in than label anyways. So I'm just trying to show you how um, we're adding to those things. But if you would just graph and label, then... Um, the process is much simpler. So we have negative 1, 5, and we have negative 1, negative 1. Those are our coordinates. Okay. Now what's the length of the major axis? Well, um, a is 3, so it's going 3 up and 3 down from the center, so the major axis is going to be 6. And the minor axis is going side to side, so from the center you're going right to, you're going left to, so you're really going 4 for your the entire major axis. Now, if you had the plot, the foci, again, the formula is the square root of a squared, 9, minus b squared, which is 4. And that gives us the square root of 5, which is approximately 2.2. Now, if you had to plot this, again, please remember that a and c always match up. So therefore, if A is going up and down, so is C. And you're always going from the center, not necessarily the origin. You're going to go from the center of the ellipse. So I'm going to go up 1, up 2, and it's 2.2, .2, so just past 2. Probably should have given better intervals, or should have spread out this graph. We're going to go down 1, 2.2. .2. And there goes our foci right there. Okay? And if you had to uh, give the coordinates of those, Again, we were at negative 1 on both coordinates. Okay. And now notice we went down 2.2 .2 from the center. Well, if the center is 2 and we went down 2.2, .2, now we're at negative 0 0.2. And the one going up 2.2, .2, all we did is we took our y value from the center and added 2.2 .2 to it. Okay. Now those are the ones where it's set up for you, where your equation is nice and standard form. Um, but now let's take it to the next level. Here we have um, the equation of ellipse, but it's not in standard form. So we have to get it in that form. So this is going to take quite a few steps, but just track with me here. And uh, now you can handle all these the same. So um, so try to follow along. Now. What we did when we did the circle and what we did with the parabola is that you want to combine, not combine, but you want to rearrange this equation to where the x's are next to each other, the y's are next to each other. And any number without x and y, we're going to move to the right. So we're going to go ahead and move that 144 to the right side of the equation, of the equal sign, sorry. So if we were to rearrange, we have 
4x squared minus 48x plus 9y squared plus 72y is equal to negative 144. Okay? Now here goes the tricky part. We have to complete the square like we did with the parabola and like we did with the circle. But we can't complete the square until the number in front of x squared and the number in front of y squared is a 1, that invisible 1. So what you have to do on this problem is we're going to take these two terms and we're going to factor out the number in front of x squared. So we're going to factor out a 4, which would leave us with x squared minus 12x. Because again, factoring out is basically you're, you're dividing that number out, so division. And here, with the y's, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to take that 9 out. We're going to factor that out, leaving us with y squared, sorry, y squared plus 8y. And that's equal to negative 144. But uh, we have to now complete the square on the inside of those parentheses. Now the steps again, like we did before, we're going to cut that b in half, so the one in front of x to the first. We're going to cut it in half, which gives us negative 6. And then we're going to take that negative 6, and we're going to square it, which gives us 36. We're going to do the same thing over here with the y. We're going to cut the 8 in half, which gives us 4. Then we're going to take that 4, and we're going to square it. Don't forget to square it. It's completing the square. Okay. Now, what we've done before is that we're going to add it to both sides, but this is the part where it gets a little tricky, is what number are we actually adding? So if I were to add that problem back in, in the parentheses, that would give us x squared minus 12x plus 36. Okay. And this would give us 9 parentheses, y squared, oops, sorry, y squared plus 8y plus 16. But again, this is the part you have to watch out for. The question is, what did we actually add to the left side of the equal sign? We technically did not just add a 36 and a 16, because if you were to distribute this 4 back into the parentheses, that number would actually be, that's, um, sorry, that's 120, 144. We actually added 144 into uh, this side of the equal sign, and also we added, so that's 90, 144 here as well. So really we added two 144s to both sides of the equal sign. Okay. Again, the way we got those numbers is if you were to eventually distribute that 4 and that 9 back into those parentheses, we wouldn't just have 36 and 16. We would have 144 and 144 in those spots. So that's the number we need to add to the right side of the equal sign. Okay? Again, you got to watch out for what you're adding to the right side of the equal sign as well. So now we can go ahead and write these. Um, again, that last part of completing the square is write it as one parenthesis squared. And again, we just cut that 12 in half again. We get minus 6 plus 9 parentheses y. Again, cut that 8 in half. Gives us a positive 4. Oops. Clean that up a little bit. Gives us a positive 4. Equals negative 144 plus 144. Of those cancel out. And we're just left with 144 on the right side. Now this still isn't, there's one more step, this still isn't in standard form. We have to have the right side equal to 1. So what we have to do is divide by 144. But we're dividing everything by 144. So now when we reduce, 4 goes into 144, 36 times. And again, notice the larger numbers on bottom when we're reducing, so that's where your numbers 
your reduced number is going to be. So the 36 is going to be on bottom, plus that 9 and the 144 reduce. 9 goes into 144 16 times. And then this is equal to 1. Now this is in standard form. Now we're able to figure out all the information we need. So in this case, the center we see is, again, switch the symbol of the X parentheses, switch the symbol of the Y parentheses, and that gives us our HK. And A, A is the square root of the larger denominator. So in this case, A is going to be 6. B is going to be the square root of the smaller denominator. So therefore, 16, square root of 16 is 4. All right? Now, I don't remember where the graph went. Um, so let's put a graph here, and we're going to go ahead and graph it. There it is. All right. So the first thing you always want to plot is the center. So the center is 6, negative 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, right 6, down 4. There goes our center right there. Okay. Now here we need to apply the A. A is 6. Now again, it's underneath. So the 36 is underneath the X. That means side to side. So we're going to go to the right 6 and to the left 6. Now we're running out of room here, but we can just make more marks. Okay. Try to make it even here. So we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 to the right, and then we're going to go back 6, which would put us right here on the y-axis. And then we apply b, which is um, 4, and then again it's underneath the y, so that means up and down. So up 1, 2, 3, 4, down 1, 2, 3, 4. And there goes our four uh, points that we need. So if we were to graph, sorry, if we were to draw this, Not perfect, but there goes our ellipse. Now, if you had to graph the the foci, again, the formula for one focus is the square root of oh, a squared minus b squared. So in that case, that's the square root of 20, which is about, that's about 4.5. And again, that's the distance you're going to go from the center. Now the question is, do you go up and down 4.5, or do you go right and left? But again, like I said many, many times, A and C match up. That means if A is going to the right and left, you're going to go, um, C is going to go to the right and left. So, um, by the way, the C in the middle of our graph stands for center, not the focus. So 1, 2, 3, 4, and a half. There goes one focus. 1, 2, 3, 4, and a half. There goes our other focus. Okay? Don't forget, you know, when you're doing this, especially on a quiz or a test, to label your coordinates. Uh, but for the sake of this video, we will move on. So again, A went side to side, B went up and down, but we have to complete the square when we're um, in order to graph these. Okay? Let's just do one more and then we will be done. Okay, same type of problem. Let's just get a little bit more practice. So again, we're going to write the x's next to each other. So we have 4x squared plus 8x. Then we have plus, oh, plus 3y squared minus 6y is equal to 5. And again, we can't complete the square unless there's an invisible 1 in front of the x squared and the y squared. So what we have to do is we have to factor out that number out in front, which would leave us with x squared plus 2x on the inside. Here we factor out the 3, which would leave us with y squared minus 2y, and that's equal to 5. Now here's where we do our steps of completing the square. We're going to take the 2, we're going to cut it in half, we're going to take that number and we're going to square it. We get 1. Here, we take the negative 2, cut it in half. We get negative 1. But when you square negative 1, you still get 1. 
Okay? So that's a number we're going to throw in that parentheses now. So we have 4x squared plus 2x plus 1 plus 3. And then we have y squared minus 2y plus 1 is equal to 5. But we have to figure out what are the two numbers that we're actually adding to the right side. Well, to the left side, we didn't really just add a 1 into the problem. We put it in the parentheses, but if we were to distribute, we really added a 4 to the, to the left side. Therefore, we have to add the 4 to the right side. Same thing with the y's. We put the plus 1 in the parentheses, but really we added a 3 to the left side. So therefore, we need to add a 3 to the right side. Okay? So now... We're going to rewrite this as one parentheses squared. Let's just switch up colors. What, what should we do? Hey, let's get more colors. Let's do a little green. So we have 4x plus, and again, cut that 2 in half, and you get 1, plus 3, and then y, cut the negative 2 in half, we get minus 1 is equal to 5 plus 4 plus 3, which is 12. Okay. Uh, purple? Sure. So now we need to get the right side equal to 1, so we divide by 12. Divide everything by that number so the right side can be equal to 1, because that's going to be standard, standard form for an ellipse. So that reduces to give us x plus 1 squared over 4 goes into 12 three times y minus 1 squared over 3 goes into 12 four times and that's equal to 1. So if we actually wanted to um, now write down some info the center of our ellipse is switch the x parentheses, switch the y parentheses so we get negative 1 positive 1. A in this case well, a squared is equal to the larger denominator, so therefore a would be 2, because the square root. b squared would equal the smaller denominator, therefore b is going to be the square root of 3. Okay. Again, you would plot your center. And in this case, since a is underneath the x, we would go to the left and to the right too from your new center and you would go up and down square to 3, which you would just round that to the nearest tenth um, to get an, an, an estimated graph, not a fully accurate graph, because if you round it, it's not fully accurate. Okay, so that's how we do these. Again, please take it slowly. Um, go one step at a time. Follow this process. And the biggest thing, again, to watch out for is this step right here this step right here to figure out what we have to add also to the right side of your equal sign. Okay. I wish you well with that. I hope that made somewhat sense and good luck.